Hello everybody, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. I cannot tell you how disgusted I am. It happens on a regular basis. Someone comes into our congregation and they want to argue against our core doctrines. Well, first of all, if you were to enter a church building in your hometown and go in there while they're having a Bible study or a church service and stand up in the middle of it and say, you're wrong, you're your basic te teachings on Christianity are all wrong. You'd be escorted out immediately. And for some reason, when people enter the congregation of our online church, the Church of the Eternally Secure, they think they have the right to do something that they probably wouldn't even think of doing in the local church. When that happens, uh, I will always uh, cast them out. Well, a church service or a Wednesday night Bible study is not the time and place to argue over uh, the core doctrines with uh, a false believer. So I will just cast them out or rely on one of the moderators in the congregation to deal with it. But what really, really disturbs me is just the whole idea that a person could come in and say, you're saying that faith in Jesus for salvation is all that's required and that a person does not have to repent of their sins and change their life and get busy working hard in serving Jesus. Yeah, that's exactly what we're saying. We're saying that salvation is offered as a free gift to everyone only because God is gracious, not because anybody deserves it. Only because of faith, not because of any religious works that we do. And only because of our faith in this person and the finished work of this person, Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh. That's what we are saying. And that's what these Lordship heretics are arguing against. There are actually core doctrines of Christianity. There are basic fundamental truths that must be believed and understood uh, by someone or else they are not a Christian. But what I want to do now is not only rebuke these Lordship heretics that are arguing that faith alone in Christ alone is insufficient. You better have a changed life. You better have a lot of works to prove that you're really saved. I want to rebuke them. And I want to point out their hypocrisy that should be obvious to everyone. But these people are so blind and full of spiritual pride and hypocrisy. They are deceived and deluded because they actually think that they've stopped sinning or somehow they've got reduced their sin enough that God is pleased with them. So my challenge to you, if you're someone who wants to argue that you better also have some good works in your uh, on your resume or else you're going to, uh, uh, you're not really a Christian because the good works 
are proof that you're really a real Christian. Well, what I'd like for you to do is let's flip this around. I'd like for you to tell me about your good works. Lordship heretic. I'm asking you to present your resume to me. Give me your resume to examine. If you're arguing that a real believer will absolutely have good works accompanying them as a result of their salvation, if you're making that claim and making that charge against everyone, then I assume that you must have a great resume of good works. But I found that every time I asked these Lordship heretics for their resume, they either don't have one or their resume of good works is puny. It's embarrassing. They're preaching the importance and necessity of works for a Christian. If you don't have good works, then you're not really a Christian, is their claim. They'll even say that, yes, it's true, you're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, but real faith is never alone. If that's what you believe, then let's see the works that accompany your faith. Give me your resume. I must be very impressive for you to be bold enough to make that charge, to point the finger at everybody else and say, what kind of works are you doing? If you're not doing enough works, I'm, you're not really saved. Well, let's ask you the same question. Let's judge you by your own standard then. Give me a resume. It must be overwhelming good works that you have. I imagine that you, you, every day when you wake up until, until you go to sleep that night, you're busy doing works for the Lord. You're not? Then shame on you. If you can't tell me of great number of good works you are doing, not only did, are you completely got sin out of your life because you don't even have a bad thought. And, and every good thing that needs to be done, you're busy doing it all the time. You never fail to do good. And you've gotten all the bad out of your life. Oh no, you, you're, you, that's not what you mean. You just, you just are sensitive to your sin. You just are uh, aware of sin and you care about it and you're trying your best. Well, the Bible says that if you want to be under the legal system, under the law, if that's what you want, if you think that uh, following the laws or the commandments and do, and doing good, if this is required, if that's what you, the system that you believe that we're under, then you're under it too. But the Apostle Paul says, if you are under the law, you are under the curse. In other words, the curse is that it's impossible to follow the law perfectly. But the standard you must need is perfection. So if you do not follow the law perfectly, from your first breath till your last breath, and every day you wake up until you go to sleep, you've not only done nothing wrong, but you've done an abundance of good, and you haven't even had a bad thought. If, if you cannot do that, then you have fallen short of the glory of God, the standard that Jesus established, the standard of perfection. If you want to be under faith plus works, faith plus law, then you better follow the law perfectly. Do you? Really? Are you really arrogant enough to make that claim about yourself? Show me your resume. Every time I ask for the resume of the Lordship Heretic, their, their resumes are just pitiful. Really? Aren't you embarrassed that you can't, don't really have anything on your resume? 
And if you do boast about what you, you do every day, then you're violating the charge by Paul that says, where is boasting then? It is excluded. Paul says, we're saved by grace, uh, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So you see, if you don't have any works to boast about, then you're a hypocrite because you're saying works are required. And if you are going to boast about your works, then you're full of spiritual pride and arrogance and self-righteousness and you're boasting. As Paul said, where is boasting then? Is excluded. It's not allowed. You see this? If you want to think it's about you, then you don't understand what Christianity is. Christianity means it's not about you, it's about Jesus. It's not about who you are, it's about who Jesus is. God and Savior. It's not about what you have done or what you will do. It's about what Jesus has done, what Jesus has accomplished for us. But you're taking the focus off of Jesus and putting it on yourself. You're trying to steal glory from Jesus Christ and share the glory, saying that you also have contributed to salvation by your good works. But the Bible says the works of Man is like filthy rags in the sight of God. That's what God really thinks of your works. But where, where's your resume? I, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for any of the Lordship heretics to tell me, make a video and tell me about all the works you do every day. And not just one day, but day after day after day, week after week, year after year, decade after decade. I'm sure if you got saved it, years ago that you have a huge amount of works to on that resume. There's a lot for you to boast about, right? Oh, wait. Don't boast, remember? I have some people in mind. I don't need to mention your name. If you've been coming into our congregation and saying you're giving people a license to sin, it's a uh, uh, you know, easy believism or uh, uh, hyper grace. If this is what you're charging against us, you don't understand the gospel. You don't believe the real gospel. And when you want to offer your works to God on top of the blood of Jesus Christ, you've committed adultery. Adultery means instead of relying on the pure blood of Jesus Christ, you've ruined it with your filthy works added to it. Shame on you. But if you think I'm wrong, then just prove me wrong. Give me your resume. You should be, it should be very easy for someone so full of spiritual pride, self-righteousness, arrogance, egotism. That's what we see in you. You're deluded. To actually make comments saying that we better have a lot of works with our salvation. Well, that means we need to examine your works to see if you pass the test. Can you pass the test you're imposing on everyone? No, you fall short. Oh, you think you can pass the test? Show me your resume. Let me see all the works that you have. But the truth is, the people who are arguing that works must accompany our faith as proof of our salvation, you're the people that aren't really working. The ones who are working, the, all the ones who are working that I know of, they're the ones that are saying our works are filthy rags. I will never argue that my works have any value for my salvation. But we're busy working, not because we need to work to get our salvation, not because we need to work to keep our salvation, not because we need to work to prove to you that we have salvation. <laughs> we're busy working because we love to serve the Lord. It's a, it's a privilege. It's an honor.
It's not a burden imposed on us through some system of legalism that you believe in. Yes, you're a liar. You say you believe salvation is by grace alone and faith, al faith alone in Christ alone, but true saving faith is never alone. It's always accompanied by works, right? Liar! Hypocrite! All right. I just needed to get that off my chest. And I hope that you and others like you Perhaps you will be aware now what you're really doing. And perhaps you'll be ashamed. 